very good evening to all our viewers and welcome to tonight's edition of Prime Time News coming to you live from Anil Sir Studios in Colombo. I am Arun Dabi Mudan Naika. Let's start off with a look at the stories making headlines this evening. Newly constructed Badulla Chenkaladi Road vested with the public 7.2 billion rupees spent on the construction project. Sri Lanka ranked second in South Asia for child wasting. Queues to purchase rice in the country in addition to milk powder, gas and sugar queues. Reveal the truth behind the mysterious jet plane that landed in Ratmalana. A request from the frontline socialist party. India and China vying for two development projects in the north. India to impose stringent measures ahead of New Year's Eve. Sri Lanka police decides to issue licenses for outdoor celebrations. Now the story is in detail. The reconstructed Badulla Chenkaladi Road was vested to with the public today under the auspices of Minister of Highways, Johnston Fernando. A total of 7.2 billion rupees has been spent on the construction work of the Badulla Chenkaladi Road. The construction work has spanned 30 months and the road extends for 86.65 kilometers. The road was constructed in three phases under the Saudi Fund for Development. Some people say if we go to the village, they will hoot at us. I would like to tell them that we are in the village now. All those are false allegations. The opposition has become a faction that can't even lie properly now. We will develop this country. The safety of this country has been ensured by President Gotabe Rajapaksha. Now we have the challenge of making Sri Lanka a developed nation amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. We will bring this country to the most developed state it has been in its history. The Bangladesh Bank has extended validity of the credit facility it extended to Sri Lanka by three months of the expiry date of the first three-month tenure of the credit facility. Previously, Bangladesh extended the credit facility amounting to $200 million under a currency swap deal with Sri Lanka and the country received the loan facility from Bangladesh in three tranches. Citing a senior official of the Bangladesh Bank, the New Age reported that the validity of the credit facility has been extended. If the installment principal remains unpaid even after six months, the applicable interest would be 2.5% plus LIBOR. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations says Sri Lanka is ranked on top in South Asia for child wasting alongside India. A balanced meal with all the nutrients include fruits, vegetables, grains, rice, eggs and dairy products including milk. Unfortunately, in Sri Lanka at present, there is a large shortage of these food items and as a result, prices have skyrocketed. The Asia and the Pacific Regional Overview of Food Security and Nutrition published by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations indicates that child wasting is very high in Sri Lanka and India as per the criteria set by the World Health Organization. The World Health Organization defines child wasting as the prevalence of wasting among children under five years of age. It refers to a child who is too thin for his or her height and is the result of recent rapid weight loss or the failure to gain weight. 16% of children in Sri Lanka are of low weight at birth. 14% of newborn infants in the country suffer from severe malnutrition. 58% of children between the ages of 6 to 11 months and 38% of children between the ages of 12 to 23 months suffer from anemia. According to UNICEF reports, 29% of preschoolers below the age of 5 possess vitamin deficiency. What are the results of child wasting? Contracting non-communicable diseases contracting communicable diseases, decreased intellectual development, decreased ability to learn.
Children really need the good food uh, to grow. Uh, special children under two years, they are uh, 80 percent of the brain development um, happen during this period. Therefore, they need uh, age-appropriate energy and the protein as well as vitamin and minerals. You, they need the nutrient adequate diet. So, nutrient adequate diet, we need uh, vegetables and the fruits. So, in the from that they can get their vitamins and minerals. At the same time, they can use the jack uh, bread fruit and these manual and the, all the other fruits as well as at least one green leaves having the enough sufficient quantity of uh, fruits I think then they can make they can get enough vitamins and minerals the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations warned that if the issue remains unaddressed with the full extent of the impacts of COVID-19 not yet known some scenarios predict a large deterioration of food security and nutritional status especially for the most vulnerable populations according to reports of the UN Sri Lanka is at a top position in the list of countries where food prices are rising rapidly at present, because of their busy lifestyles, many parents are used to giving their children meals that are not balanced in terms of nutrition, like bakery items that can be delivered to doorsteps or instant food that can be cooked in under five minutes. How much has Sri Lanka prioritized nutrition when providing food to our children? Vegetables are a must for a balanced diet. What is the situation in terms of vegetable availability in the market? The supply of vegetables to wholesale markets is at a low level at present. As a result of the shortage of vegetables, the prices have increased. Vegetables arriving from the central province have been reduced. I think this is the result of the shortage of fertilizer. Because of these reasons, we feel that cultivation activities will be hindered soon. The amount of vegetables arriving in Dambulla has reduced for one and a half months. The markets that receive close to 1.5 to 2.5 million kilograms per day are now getting 450,000 to 500,000 kilograms. I used to bring 40 to 50 bags of long beans. Today, I can only bring 2 to 4 bags. I used to collect 25 to 30 bags of winged beans. I'm a farmer who comes in a vehicle full of vegetables. Now I bring vegetables on a bike. Potatoes that we grow come out to the size of a gecko's egg. Customers question us regarding the size of the potatoes. A solution to the fertilizer issue is yet to be provided. These are the pedophiles of the 16th settlement under the Gal Oya project in Ampara. Around 1,500 acres of paddy cultivations have been destroyed as fertilizer has not been produced at the proper time. Farmers charge that although it has been 60 days since the organic liquid fertilizer that was provided by the government was used on the cultivation, they cannot see any progress. The state of cultivation of the farmers in Makulu Ella in Bandaravilla is no better. Minister of Trade Bandula Gunavardana said that Satosa will provide a relief pack for consumers on the 18th of this month.
A joint decision has been taken by the Sadasa management and officials at the Ministry of Trade to provide a package of goods at a concessionary rate to the people. Steps have been taken to sell the package at 1,998 rupees. We will be handing over these packs to homes. Then the allegation some people making of citing that there are no goods at Sadasa will become baseless. However, this is what the general public who visited the Satosa stores had to say about this. A queue to purchase rice was seen opposite a wholesale shop in Gaul today. We have been standing in line for three hours since 4.30 in the morning. The line is still there. Three days ago, the price was 108 rupees. Today, the wholesale price is 118 rupees. It is like there is no government. There is no paddy. Paddy is not available, even at 85 rupees. Previously, there was an excess of harvest. Now the harvest has reduced because of the shortage of fertilizer. The people will have to purchase a kilogram of rice at 150 to 200 rupees. The issue of cooking food that has been purchased has become another issue due to the gas shortage in the country. News First visited several households in Colombo and inquired as to how they prepare their meals. Gas na pute, ram te rupna gas upna. Gas na pute, ram te rupna gas upna. Ina dar dar ome lipa patu karna tapre. Tena pna ne, apre thoda me apre thoda kine gona me kala thoda kala thoda. Gas na apre thoda dawat dawat thoda apre kadeng kala ne. Seedi ka pundi thiya ne mukka kath mane. Tuongal dipa patu karna ne phunwan thomi apre phele kival ne kono apre patu kala ne. Lam te lipa thoda apre patu karna Gas cylinders weren't supplied to the market today as well. Consumers had to wait in queues since early morning to purchase gas. A truck carrying gas cylinders arrived at the gas distribution center. A long queue to purchase gas was seen in Kadavata today. The rulers of the country must understand the problems of the people. I hope that they realize the woes of the people. Many deaths were reported from gas explosions. What did they do? They didn't do anything. Did they take legal action against any company? We are not protected. Kerosene has become a substitute for gas these days. Long queues to purchase kerosene were seen in several locations today as well. This was the situation at a filling station in Urgudavatta.
Time for a short commercial break. Stay with News First. We will be right back. Welcome back to the news. A fire broke out at a garage dump in Budgamo Road, Rajgiriya this evening. Kote Municipal Council said two fire trucks were dispatched to douse the fire. Fire Brigade of the Kote Municipal Council said the fire has been contained. Meanwhile, a fire erupted at a boatyard in Matakulia this afternoon. The fire erupted at 1 p.m. today at a storage in a boatyard belonging to the Sino company. <laughs> Four fire trucks were dispatched to douse the fire. The cause of the fire is yet to be ascertained. Education Secretary of the Frontline Socialist Party, Pubutu Jagod, expressed his views on the mysterious jet that landed in Ratmalana and then flew to Tirupati. When looking at the flight details of the private jet T7JSG, the jet has landed at the Bandarnaik International Airport from India on the 10th of this month. On the 10th itself, the jet has travelled to the Jomo Kenyatta Airport in Kenya. The jet has travelled to multiple locations in Kenya on the 14th. On the same day, they have left Kenya from the Bukoba Airport for Tanzania. On the 15th, they have left Tanzania for Kampala. Then from Kampala, they have come to Ratmalana once again on the 16th. After arriving in Ratmalana on the 16th, the jet has travelled to Cochin and Chennai before travelling to Tirupati on the 23rd. It came back to Sri Lanka from Tirupati on the 24th and have gone to Indira Gandhi Airport in New Delhi on the 27th. Son of Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa, Yoshita Rajapaksa, commenting to a daily newspaper, had said that no payments have been made for the jet and that these trips were funded by a close associate of the Rajapaksas. Whoever it is that gives money, it is public funds that are being wasted in this manner. The issue here is that who flew to Cochin and Chennai on this jet and what was carried in this jet. Only a very rich person can travel in a jet like this. The hourly charge for a legacy 600 jet like this is 6,700 US dollars. So approximately 32 million rupees have been spent for this jet on a daily basis. Who travelled to Chennai and Cochin by spending such exorbitant amounts? The other question is as to why Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa spent such an amount to go to India rather than using a normal passenger flight. Information has come to light that this jet plane is owned by Jet Set Go Aviation Services Private Limited. That company provides high-class jet planes for the wealthiest people in the world. But there is a cloud of uncertainty as to whether this jet is owned by this company. We have received information that the T7 call sign for private jets is registered in San Marino. San Marino is one of the smallest states in Europe. However, San Marino has acted as a tax haven for the wealthy people across the world. On the one hand, a fair suspicion has arisen as to whether this jet plane is a result of a project to clear black money. Both China and India are focusing on two unique projects in the northern province of Sri Lanka. The Jaffna Point Pedro Fisheries Harbour is one such project. The other project is the renewable energy project in the Kaudari Mune area in Kirinochi, where a Chinese sea cucumber hatchery is already underway. Point Pedro Fisheries Harbour. This harbour is currently being used by fishermen. During his recent visit to Jaffna, Chinese ambassador to Sri Lanka, Ki Seng Hong, expressed his interest in the area by observing the area by a drone as well. Opposite is India Although the Point Pedro Port Development Project was launched in August 2019 with the financial assistance of the Asian Development Bank of 12.6 billion rupees, it has since been halted. However, Minister of Fisheries Douglas Devananda said in Kilinochi today, India has shown its interest in the project. 
the Asia Virti Wangi. The Asian Development Bank has halted the project, but we have recommenced discussions. They have now agreed to provide the funds. On the one hand, India says that they will finish this project. On the other hand, China has expressed its interest as well. Several investors are expecting to invest in this too. But we will give the priority to the Asian Development Bank. This will not be implemented only as a harbour. Many more projects in line with this will come to light in the northern province. Several peers in relation to aquaculture are included in this project as well. Asian Development Bank will be given priority. If that does not work out, we shall consider India. Aren't you going to ask me what we are going to do if all of this fails? <laughs> Against a backdrop where both India and China have expressed their interests to sign agreements, are you leaning more towards India? First priority is the Asian Development Bank, but the first choice from our region is India. Kaudari Mune Renewable Energy Project Kaudari Mune is a significant location in the Pundarin Divisional Secretariat in the Kilinochi district. The Sri Lanka Sustainable Energy Authority recently requested the Pundarin Divisional Secretariat to allocate land for renewable energy projects on the south coast of Kaudari Mune. A Gazette notification was issued on the 17th of April 2014 for the acquisition of lands in this regard. The Sustainable Energy Authority had written to the Pundarin Divisional Secretariat on the 10th November requesting that two Indian nationals be allowed to visit the area for official purposes. However, the Chinese Sri Lankan sea cucumber breeding project is located close to the proposed site of the Kaudari Mune coastal wind power plant. The parent company of this project is located in Ariale, Jaffna, same place where the Chinese ambassador to Sri Lanka, Ki Zheng Hong, recently visited. The distance from Ariale in Jaffna to Kaudari Mune in Kilinochi is only 6 nautical miles. We do not have the necessary funds to carry out the expected development projects. If foreign nations come forward to invest money in Sri Lanka in a manner that would not damage the country and its people, we will embrace them. While China and India are thus competing for new projects, they have already acquired administrative powers in a number of economic hubs in Sri Lanka as well. A Chinese company currently owns the majority of the high-profit business segment in the Hamantura port. China also owns a majority stake in the Colombo South port and the neighbouring port city, which is also a Chinese project. Business magnate Adani of India now owns a majority stake in the West Container Terminal of the Colombo Port, which is located close to the Port City and the Colombo South Port. Meanwhile, Energy Minister Uday Gammanpilla had spoken to the Hindu newspaper in India, stating that an agreement would be reached with India within a month for the Trincomalee oil tank complex project. The Indian oil company already owns 15 of the 99 tanks built by the British and the agreement will decide on the remaining tanks. This oil tank farm is located close to the Trincomalee port as well. Accordingly, India and China have already occupied a number of strategically important coastal locations in the country in the context of directing their attention towards many other places of special importance in Sri Lanka. Our sea is invaluable to the entire world. Our sea is full of unlimited resources. Our sea is the heritage that will pass on to our children. Let's protect our sea from foreign influence. Let's use our name and call it Our Sea. The Sea of Sri Lanka. Also in local news, a spice and uh, related product sales network is being set up across the country based on a proposal by President Gotabe Rajpaksa. The spice marketing board was established in 1972, but over time it was left inactive. Steps were taken to reactivate this at the request of the area residents when the president visited Mimure under the Gamma Samaga Pilisandarak program. Accordingly, the Madhuvala branch, which was established, was inspected by the president. In addition, there are 10 branches operating island wide. <laughs> Minister Mahindra Rajpaksa paid homage to the Mahasamad Devalaya in Ratnapura this morning. The Prime Minister also attended the unveiling of the newly constructed gold-plated fence built around the Buddha statue and Bodhi tree at the Mahasamad Devalaya premises. Uh, 
Thereafter, the Prime Minister attended a special puja at the Devalaya. Meanwhile, opposition leader Sajid Premadasa met with the business community in the Lunugahamvera town on the third day of the Manushatve Chari Kava program. Some in the government are saying that people should make some sacrifices. Some others say to limit the amount of food. Another group is saying that people should skip a meal. After some time, some in the government will ask the people to refrain from eating. I must tell you that the people of this country made sacrifices from the very first day this government came into power. When the people are sacrificing, those in the government are enjoying all the benefits. When this government come to power, the corrupt officials and thieves enjoy all the benefits while the people are left helpless. <laughs> Former Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe expressed the following remarks to the media regarding the economic situation of the country. The government must either go to the IMF and negotiate or otherwise come up with a credible alternative. Neither has taken place so far. In the meantime, the people in the country are suffering and the national mood is turning hostile to the government. In addition to these problems, we are also faced with another problem, the imminent food shortage. According to reports, this year's harvest will be about 60% of last year. It's not only in paddy, but also in other crops. If we do not resolve this issue, the mood will not only turn bare, there will be an explosion, an explosion that will affect the government and parliament. Therefore, government must take immediate steps to finalize the discussions with the Indian government to obtain oil and food stuff on a line of credit. This is the only way out. It is only a temporary solution. Lines of credit or foreign loans by itself does not increase our foreign exchange reserve. But to maintain stability, the government must act quickly to ensure there is food in the country and then come up with a solution to the foreign exchange crisis. India has restricted celebrations ahead of New Year to contain a possible surge in the Omicron variant of COVID-19. India has recorded over 650 cases of the Omicron variant of COVID-19 across 21 states so far. Rise in COVID-19 cases has prompted the Indian state governments to go back to night curfew and other measures to contain the possible spread of the highly infectious variant. The Union Health Ministry has asked states to ensure stringent implementation of COVID-19 protocols and urged citizens to not lower their guard, especially during the festive season. France has also announced tighter COVID-19 restrictions amid concerns over the Omicron variant. From the 3rd of January, remote working will become compulsory for those who can and public gatherings will be limited to 2,000 people for indoor events. The news comes as France recorded more than 100,000 new infections on Saturday, the highest number reported in the country since the pandemic began. However, the French Prime Minister did not bring in a New Year's Eve curfew. Countries across Europe are tightening restrictions as infections rise and the new Omicron variant spreads through the continent. U.S. health officials have halved the recommended isolation time for people with asymptomatic COVID-19 from 10 to 5 days amid a surge in cases. The measure is expected to alleviate disruption caused by staff shortages in many areas because of infections. The Centers for Disease Control said most transmissions happen in the two days before and three days after symptoms develop. But experts have criticized the lack of testing requirements to end isolation. Teen pilot Zara Rutherford landed in Sri Lanka today on her attempt to become the youngest woman to fly around the world solo. In August, the 19-year-old British Belgian departed from West Belgium on her 51,000-kilometer journey, which is to span five continents and 52 countries, including the United States, 
Russia and Colombia. Rutherford is seeking the title held by Shezda Ways, the youngest male record holder, Mason Andrews, was 18 years old when he made the journey in 2018. Starting in Belgium, Rutherford's route takes her west through 52 countries, five continents and crosses the equator twice, first in Tumaco, Colombia and again in Jambi, Indonesia, which is part of the Guinness World Records requirements for an around-the-world flight. One thing I've learned on this trip is that, and I think this applies to everyone, that you are capable of more than you think you are. Looking back, there's some things that I would have said, I can't do that, but then I actually did, did end up doing this. So if you're able to push yourself outside of your comfort zone safely and slowly try and learn more, and then you'll see and you'll prove to yourself that actually you can do things you didn't think you'd be able to do. Moving on to sports news now, Sri Lanka's test captain and Dr. Opana Demutkara Ratna has been nominated for the ICC Men's Test Player of the Year 2021 award. England's Joe Root, India's R. Ashwin and New Zealand's Kyle Jemison have also been nominated. There are not too many batters in world cricket who can make a case of being one of the best openers right now than Dimut Karna Ratna. Knocking 902 runs in seven matches with an average of 69.38 runs and scoring four centuries, 2021 has been nothing short of glittering for the Sri Lankan test skipper. The 33-year-old was already a key figure in the longer format for the Sri Lankans. But what would have caught the eye of those who made the ICC list is the sturdiness of his performances this year. Karuna Ratna, who was in the ICC's Test Team of the Year in 2019, had his best bits on home soil. In a series against Bangladesh, where he ultimately picked up the player of the series, Sri Lankan cricket fans saw their captains go 140 and 66 in a first Test win and 244 in the second Test. And with that, we wrap up tonight's edition of Primetime News. Thank you very much for joining us. For the News First Team, I'm Arundhati Mudanayaka, together with our interpreter this evening, Tharaka Gabriel. Good night.